Hey, what's up? It's Nathan here with thebtccourse.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up a multi-sig Bitcoin wallet using Unchained Capital. So basically how that works is you have two keys to your Bitcoin wallet and Unchained Capital holds the third key. And since you hold two of the three keys, like you have full control over your Bitcoin. And if you happen to lose a key, well, then Unchained Capital will have a backup and you can still get to your Bitcoin. So it's considered collaborative custody because, you know, they hold a key. So that way you don't mess something up and lose, you know, all three keys or two keys or something like that and can't access your Bitcoin. So uh, anyway, you can read more about it on their website. But basically, we're going to go straight into personal vaults right here. And we're going to go ahead and just create a vault. So again, if you need more information, check out their website. So go ahead and I'm going to create an account and then we'll be right back. And so here we are on the inside and it did ask me if I wanted to upgrade my account to I think a tier two account and it wanted me to upload my driver's license and you know KYC type of information. But I don't think you need to do that if you're just doing the multi-sig. I think you need to do the tier two stuff if you're doing like loans or buying and stuff like that. But if you're just doing multi-sig, I don't think you need to you know, do any KYC stuff. We'll find out because I didn't do it. But I just wanna address that real quick that I had ignored that option. All right, so what we wanna do now is come over to keys. And you should hopefully already have at least two keys already available. I have two ledgers here, but maybe you have a treasure and they also support cold cards. So any of those three devices will work with Unchained Capital. I'm just using ledgers because I have them handy right here. And you would need to go through the process of putting a seed phrase on here and setting them up with the Bitcoin app as well. So make sure you've done that before coming here before you can put your keys onto Unchained Capital. All right, so I'm gonna do upload a new key and then we need a good name to remember without revealing too much. So we need to suggest a name. So we'll do this first one will be Della. Okay, so next. And what I would probably do is write Della on my stick so I can keep them straight, but maybe that's just me. And then, yeah, so treasurer, cold card, or ledger. So depending on what device you're using, um, you know, you might have to do a couple different steps or something, but the idea remains the same that you're just uploading your keys to Unchained Capital and your public key, not your private key. Your public key is going to Unchained Capital. All right, ledger, and then export, blah, blah, blah. So connect ledger, plug in your ledger and unlock it, and then open the Bitcoin app. So let me do that real quick. So plugging in my ledger, and actually I got my camera over here. All right, let me plug in my pin. So I'm in my ledger and I wanna open up the Bitcoin app. So I'll do that. So Bitcoin is ready. And then I'm gonna do connect to ledger. And there, found it already. So connect. And confirm public key. So come over. Yep, that's the path. That's the public key. And approve. And now I see it on the Unchained Capital website. So that looks good. So we'll go with next. And okay, we'll create success. I've uploaded a key. So now what I wanna go ahead and do is come back to keys and upload a new key. And I'll do another suggested name, Beechwood, and next. And again, I'm doing a ledger, so I'll select ledger. And now I need to switch out devices and plug in my other ledger. And so now I'm in it and I'll open the Bitcoin app. And then I wanna to connect to ledger. And then it's telling me to confirm my public key. Yep, yep. Okay. And next, and create. All right, so now I have two keys connected to Unchained Capital. So I have Beechwood here and Della. And then what I need to go ahead and do is basically make a vault with these keys. So I'm gonna come to vaults here and new vault. And okay, so I do need to complete my tier two profile details in order to create a vault. So that's something to note. And I assume because this is an American based company that they need to KYC their customers. So that's part of doing the collaborative custody thing is sometimes you have to play by their rules. I have a tutorial on how to create your own multi-sig wallet using Sparrow Wallet so you could do it yourself. But if you want this collaborative custody where some other company or entity owns that third key, you might have to do KYC. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and complete profile and I'm gonna fill out the information needed for tier two here. So give me a minute. 
And so I submitted the information and I was like, shoot, I'm gonna have to wait for it to get approved. But I already got an email saying that my account has been approved. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit complete. And yeah, my tier two is already approved. So it was instantaneous, so that's kind of nice. I don't have to wait for 24 hours or something like that for somebody to go review my account. All right, so now that I don't have to wait, we'll come back to vaults here and new vault. And so here we go, we have choose your custody model. So we have client controlled, which is what we have here because I have the two keys, right? So boom, boom, two keys myself, and then Unchain holds the third key. Or you could do multi-institution. So Unchain holds one, somebody else holds one, and then you hold one. I'm not really sure why you would do that unless you really don't trust yourself. All right, so we're gonna go with client controlled and click on next. And then I wanna be able to sign on my own. So that way I have you know both keys and then my backup is Unchained Capital in case like I mess something up and I lose a key. Well, then I got Unchained to back me up. But you could set it up that, you know, you're a signer and then Unchained the signer and then you have the backup somewhere. Maybe you send it off to the United Kingdom and, you know, only if stuff gets really, really bad and you have to flee the United States, well, then you have your, your backup device over there in the UK for your fallback plan or something like that. So anyway, sign on your own is what I'm going with next. So name your vault. I want to call it demo and then I'll click on next here. All right, so now I'm going to pick my keys. So pick a key. So I've got Beechwood and next and then pick another key and I got Della and next and next. So that looks good. I agree and create. And this is for cold car users, so you would need to download a special file for your device, but I'm not doing a cold card setup right now, so I can kind of disregard this, but if you have a cold card, you'd follow these steps. I've actually set it up with a cold card before, and they're very clear steps on what to do, so don't, don't get concerned about this being complicated. It's really not. They do a good job instructing you through the process. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue then. All right, so now I have my vault here, my demo vault. And of course, just like anything else, you can't really do much until you actually have Bitcoin inside of it. So we need to go ahead and deposit some Bitcoin. And so here's an address that I could go ahead and deposit to. So I'll go ahead and copy that real quick. And then we need to go to wherever our Bitcoin is. So probably an exchange. So you're sending from an exchange to your multi-sig setup. So that way it's nice and secure and not facing counterparty risk by sitting on a, an exchange. So I have some Bitcoin on Coinbase. So I'm gonna go over to Coinbase real quick and I can go ahead and send and receive. So I'm gonna click on send and I'm just gonna send $20 worth of Bitcoin. Now, normally I would not send this small amount of Bitcoin because the fees will eat me alive. And also every time you send Bitcoin, it creates a new UTXO or unspent transaction output. And if you have lots of little UTXOs, well then your fees could be ridiculous later on when you're doing on-chain transactions. And I have a video about UTXOs and fees and stuff like that. So if you need more information, link in the description down below. But normally I'd wait till I have at least a thousand dollars saved up before I send it off an exchange. So that way I'm not dealing with massive fees later on. Anyway, enough about that. Let's go ahead and send this $20 over. So continue and send now. And my Bitcoin's on its way. I'm gonna go ahead and view this transaction. I'll copy my wallet address. And I'm gonna go to mempool.space and I have a video on the mempool or mempool.space. So I'll link in the description down below if you need more information on what we're looking at here. So there's my wallet, here's the transaction, and here it is in that first block. So hopefully within about nine minutes, this block will confirm and the Bitcoin will be in my Unchained Capital multi-sig wallet. Let's come back over here and actually, look at that, it already showed up as probably pending. And if I look down here, it shows it kind of grayed out. So this transaction is pending confirmation. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait for the transaction to confirm and then we'll go ahead and withdraw it so you can see what that process looks like. But I already said the transaction has confirmed here. And if I come back to my Unchained Capital wallet, I can see that it is no longer grayed out. It says deposit here. And also the withdraw button can now be clicked. Also transfer can also be clicked, but transfers for if you have uh, another vault active or a loan that you wanna transfer funds to. And I don't have another vault or loan, so you know I can't really transfer anything but I can withdraw. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so it's pretty simple, self-explanatory. So where do we want to withdraw it to? So let's say that, you know, Bitcoin goes to a million and I want to send it back to the exchange in order to sell it 
and buy a house or something like that. So I come back to Coinbase here and this time I want to receive. Coinbase gives me an address, so I'll copy it. And of course, maybe you're not using Coinbase, maybe you're using Binance or something else. Well then, you know, you go wherever you go to get that address. So throw the address in there and okay, that sounds good. So the amount of Bitcoin that I wanna send and I wanna go ahead and do max withdrawal and we can do, go ahead and select our fee rate here. So recommended or custom, I always do custom and I go to the mempool and I see what the fees are. So it looks like in order to be in the first block, it'll be about 26 sats per view byte. The second block, 11 sats, third block, three sats. So, you know, if I put it around 11 or 10 sats, you know, I should be in the next two to three blocks. All right, so I'm just gonna say 10 sats per V byte right there. And I'll go ahead and click on next. And then the keys below will be used to sign this withdrawal. So if I needed unchained to, to sign for me, like I lost my Beechwood key, well then I would do unchained and have them sign for me. Now it does cost $20 for unchained to sign. So that's something to note. That's where they make their money. Um, if they need to sign for you, then they're gonna charge you some money. But I have both my keys, so I'll do Beechwood and Della and next. And okay, so all this stuff looks good right here. I'll go ahead and create the transaction. And so I have Della loaded up now, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on Ledger and then sign with Ledger. And I just realized I need to open the Bitcoin app first, so let me open that up real quick. Okay, now sign with Ledger. I register wallet, okay. Wallet name demo, wallet policy, blah, 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 approve. And then my key. Approve, there's, approve, ours, approve, spend from known wallet, wallet name demo, approve, review output number one, approve, from transaction, accept and send. All right, cool, so I've signed with Della here. I could go ahead and download the partially signed Bitcoin transaction if I want to. So I could maybe email it to somebody else if they need to sign it. Like maybe somebody else has my Beechwood ledger. And so I'd send them this file. They would download it and then they could go ahead and sign using my Beechwood device. And so that's something you could do with that PSBT. But, you know, I already have the Beechwood device. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug my current ledger. And I'll go ahead and plug in my other one, my Beechwood one, and log into it real quick. And so I have it up now, and I'm going to open up the Bitcoin app. And then I'm going to uh, go into my ledger and sign with ledger. And then I need to go through like the same steps again. So register the wallet, demo, wallet policy, yep. And then I need to approve all the keys again. Okay. And okay and okay and then spend from known wallet demo approve and review output number one okay accept and send and so there we go i'm all signed now now i'm ready to broadcast so i can go ahead and click on broadcast and the broadcast is successful so i can go ahead and click on this right here and it loads the Blockstream Explorer, and I like mempool.space more, so I'm just gonna copy the transaction. I'll come over to mempool.space, and I'll look up the transaction. And so here it is in the first block, just barely, so it'll probably fall, fall back a block here, but anyway, there it is. There's my fee, or fee rate, and my total fee. This is what the transaction looks like. We can see that it's a multi-sig, two or three, and everything else, so everything looks correct there. And so that's how you would go ahead and send from a Unchained Capital Multi-Sig Vault. Now, I do want to point out a couple other things while we're here. Um, let me come back into my vault. And so if we scroll down here, let me make this full screen. There's a couple of things like wallet configuration file. So download your vault's wallet backup. So it is recommended that you go ahead and do this. So that way, like if Unchained Capital goes out of business, well, then you'll have this file right here and you could basically restore your Unchained Capital wallet and you could go ahead and do the transaction by yourself without having to log into unchainedcapital.com 
because this website would be gone because they went out of business or something like that. So you would want to download this wallet configuration file and just save it away somewhere just in case Unchained Capital goes away and vanishes. You can still, you know, do what you need to do with your Bitcoin. So definitely download a backup of your file. And it also tells you how to recover funds from the multi-signature address. So spend some time kind of looking at this and Caravan and trying to understand this concept just in case the off chance that it goes out of business. But, you know, it seems like a pretty solid business. So... I'm not too stressed about it, but you never want to leave your Bitcoin in somebody else's hands. And then here's a cold card configuration file. So if you needed that, you could go ahead and download it. And finally, there's verification threshold. So record your identity video to enable verification. So basically what this is doing is, is you can set up a verification percentage. So if somebody came in here and tried to send, you know, 100% of your vault, um, they would... Unchained Capital would need a, a video file of you before they would let that transaction go through. And so this would just be another layer of security. So that way, you know, if somebody happened to get into your Unchained Capital account and they're trying to send all your Bitcoin out of there, well, they need a video saying, hey, yeah, send my Bitcoin before Unchained Capital would let that Bitcoin flow out of the vault. So it's just another layer of security to help keep your Bitcoin safe. And that's pretty much really all I have to show you inside of here. It's pretty simple. And sometimes that's the best thing, keeping it simple so that way you don't have to worry about it messing up or getting too complicated or anything like that. And anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And or please check, please check out thebtccourse.com. It's a free website with Bitcoin training and tutorials. Just me trying to do my part to you know help out fellow Bitcoiners. So with that, I hope you have a great rest of the day.